Hey there, Alex here. The Xiaomi Mi Max 2 is really more of a small tablet rather than a big phone. The Redmi Note 4X is big, but the Mi Max 2 is just huge. The weird thing is, I think it kind of works. I don't like big phones, but I get why people like them. Big screen, big battery, what's not to like? especially when there are a million games that you can download for free and you can have Gandalf nodding his head with you for 10 hours straight, which is really what the Mi Max 2 is all about. Not the head nodding, but the media consumption part. The 6.44 inch screen with Full HD resolution is not the best looking screen, but because it's so big, anything that shows up on screen looks really good. Because it's only Full HD, the processor doesn't have to work that hard, and a humongous 5300mAh battery lasts me 2 days of use easily. Oh, and you also get a pair of speakers that actually sound really good. The rest of the phone are pretty much just about good enough. The design of the phone is pretty generic and with just good enough materials for it to feel like a more premium phone. The processor is a Snapdragon 625, paired with a good enough amount of storage and RAM for you to run most of the apps and games you need. It's a slightly older chipset now, but it still runs quite well. The 12 megapixel rear camera is just about good enough, capturing decent looking images in daylight with vibrant colors, but lacking a bit in dynamic range and details. In low light, it's about as good as other budget devices, which is to say, just don't expect too much out of it. The 5 megapixel front camera is also just about good enough. You do get a nice bonus with the ability to record 4K, but the quality is also just about good enough. Then you also get a few nice little bonuses like a good enough fingerprint sensor, a USB Type-C port with Quick Charge 3.0, and also Android 7.1.1 Nougat out of the box. Which brings me to the not so great part about the phone, the software. It's running MIUI 8 and it's a really heavy skin on top of Android. From the design to the way things work, almost everything has been customized. When I'm using it, I can definitely feel the software weighing the processor down a little bit. I'm also not a huge fan of how much permissions some of the default apps need, and how I can't disable some of them. It's all just a little bit too much for me. It's also pretty strange how the multi-window mode and the fast app switching has been disabled on this phone. But something I can't deny is how feature-rich the software is, which is something that some people may like. It comes with everything but the kitchen sink. A few of them that I found really useful are the ability to duplicate apps, the ability to lock apps, double tap to wake the phone, swiping down anywhere on the home screen to get to notifications, adding useful system shortcuts to the home screen, and customizing the navigation buttons. It even has a remote app for you to use the IR blaster with. So if you're someone who finds all these features useful, you might even like the software. I know maybe saying that most of the phone is just good enough isn't the most positive thing, but it is, especially when you weigh it against the price of the phone. For around 300 Singapore dollars for the 64 gigabytes version, it's a really great value for money if your main use of the phone is going to be media consumption. For me, perhaps one major downside would be the lack of NFC, but if you don't use mobile payments, it's probably not a big deal. For the Mi Max 2, being good enough is better than perfection because perfection is very, very expensive and probably unattainable. By focusing on what it does best, doing just enough to make the rest of the phone good enough, and keeping the price low enough, I think the Mi Max 2 hits the right spot for a lot more people. Thanks for watching my review of the Mi Max 2. Do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed my content. Thanks and see you guys on the next one.